Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Eric from eGetSec. This will be a benchmark test between the recently released S21 Ultra 5G versus a couple of the hottest gaming phones released last year, namely the ROG Phone 3, the Nubia Red Magic 5G, and the Black Shark 3 Pro. So the Black Shark 3 Pro and the Nubia Red Magic 5G both have the Snapdragon 865, whereas the ROG Phone 3 has the Snapdragon 865 Plus. And the S21 Ultra that I have here is the Exynos version. I still haven't gotten my hands on the Snapdragon 888 version for the S21 Ultra, but I'll try to get my hands on that and do further tests. So for the test, I'm going to be running Geekbench 5, and 2 to Benchmark, and 3D Mark test. So I'm going to be doing the stress test and see how well the, the phones perform under sustained loads. So let's get these tests started guys! Alright so in terms of resolution, just to keep things fair, I'll be setting all of them to 1080p. But I've left the refresh rate at their maximum. So for the Black Track 3 Pro, it's 90 Hz. Going to the Red Magic 5G, it's at 144 Hz. And there's no option to get Quad HD on the Red Magic 5G. So let's go to the S21 Ultra. It's on adaptive up to 120 Hz. And screen resolution is put it at full HD plus. Now of course we'll do the same for the ROG Phone 3. And refresh rate is at 144 Hz. So in case you've noticed, I've elevated all the phones. So having a bit of space will allow the phones to dissipate the heat that they're generating during the test. Alright, so let's start with the Geekbench 5 first. Since the three gaming phones that I have got in front of me has a dedicated gaming mode, I'll be using that. So in case of the ROG Phone 3, it has X mode, which you can see it has been turned on. I'll turn on the switch here for the Red Magic. Okay, so it's running there. Let's see, game enhancement. It's on auto mode. Let's try to put it in super performance. And I'll do the same for the Black Shark 3 Pro. So with that said, let's start. Okay, so these are the scores that I got guys. The one that performed the worst is the Red Magic 5G with single core score of 893, multi core score of 3162, followed by the Black Shark 3 Pro with a single core score of 907. Multi core score did pretty well, 3370. Actually, the highest single core score goes to the Exynos 2100 on the S21 Ultra with a single core score of 1054, 1003 on the ROG Phone 3. And the winner for the multi-core score is the ROG 3 with 3473. So let's do the compute benchmark now. Alright, so the Exynos 2100 absolutely dominates this test. It has more than double the score when compared with the older Snapdragon 865. So it scored 7,419, followed by the ROG 3, 3,684, Red Magic at 3,226, and 3,238 on the Black Track 3 Pro. So I'll let the phones cool down a bit before we go ahead and run the Antutu benchmark test. Okay, next up is the Antutu benchmark test. So let's start the test in 3, 2, 1. Alright, so those are the score guys. The ROG Phone 3 still led the pack with a score of 650,106. Maximum temperature hit was 34.7, so it didn't get too hot. The Exynos 2100 on the other hand reached a maximum of 40.8 and it looks like that's where it started throttling. And it only managed to score 590,312. The Red Magic 5G also broke the 600,000 mark with 603,839. It was a second in terms of temperature hit. 30 degrees and the Black Shark 3 Pro is the last place with 579,175. 
Temperature wasn't too bad with the Black Shark 3 Pro only maxing out at 35.1 degrees. So 3% loss in battery for the Black Shark 3 Pro and 4% for the rest. So I let the phones cool down a bit and then we can go ahead and do the stress test. A few moments later. Alright guys and moving on to the third and final test will be the wildlife stress test. So this is going to be a 20 minute test and see how well the phones perform and sustain loads. So once the phones start heating up then we'll see if there's any throttling happening. So let's start the test guys. So the stress test has completed guys and as expected Exynos 2100 had the highest score scoring 5300 but the stability is the lowest. It went down to 3730. For the three gaming phones that I've got here they pretty much stayed consistent so on the ROG Phone 3 between 4200 to 4100 for the Red Magic 5G it's just hovering at the 3800 uh, score. And for the Black Shark 3 Pro is at the 3700 score. So no thermal throttling happening on any of the gaming phones. The S21 Ultra didn't do too bad. Um, it's just that after that initial loop, everything went down and pretty much stayed down. And in terms of temperature, let's go down to all the phones. So for the S21 Ultra, it was the hottest phone hitting 42 degrees. The two coolest phones that I've got in the roundup is the Black Shark 3 Pro with 36 degrees and 36 degrees on the ROG Phone 3. The Red Magic 5G surprisingly almost hit 40 degrees. It maxed out at 39 degrees. What's surprising here is that this has an internal fan. So I'm not sure if you can hear it. So I was expecting the temperature to be a bit less on the Red Magic 5G but I guess it does help keep things cool somewhat and it, there's no throttling whatsoever. So if you can see here on the gaming phones it's just one straight line. On the Exynos 2100 it dipped and then once it hit that 3700 mark it just stayed there. So what this tells us is that after your phone gets hot it's going to be performing at the same level as the gaming phones that I've got here the Snapdragon 865. Before we wrap up the test I came across some interesting information for the Exynos 2100, they said that if you put the phone in power saving mode, you're not going to face issues with throttling when you're playing games. So I'll let the phone cool down a bit and I'll enable power saving mode and I'll run the stress test. Okay. So I'll go ahead and turn on power saving mode and I'll run the stress test again guys. So there's a bit of a surprise here guys, so the wildlife stress test has completed. Even though I turned on power saving mode, the best loop score wasn't too far off from the one that I got with it off. So the best loop score for my initial test, if you can see here. So my best loop score for my initial test with power saving mode off was 5300. But with power saving mode on, I actually almost hit the same score with 5220. But the difference is the lowest loop score with it off is 3730. With power saving mode on, it actually hit higher with 4561. So the stability on the first test is 70.4% and with the power saving mode on, it actually hit 87.4% of stability. So if you see here, it's a bit of a straight line. It just went down from that 5,200 score, settled at 4,500, and maintained that score all throughout. So at this point, it's looking like there is a bit of a bug with that power saving mode. I think that power saving mode should actually be the enhanced processing mode instead. Or it could be that the Exynos 2100 is such a powerful chip that you have to turn power saving mode on in order to keep that temperature from rising too high. So for those who have gotten their hands on the S21 Exynos version, give it a try, turn on power saving mode and see if the phone performs better in games and in benchmarks. It sure did in my test, so let me know how it goes for you guys in the comment section down below. So now that we've confirmed that the Exynos 2100 is a powerful chip, I actually want to do one final test 
before I end the video. So I've got the black shark cooler here. It's going to keep this phone nice and cool and we'll run one quick Antutu to benchmark test. Let me just attach it real quick here, guys. So let's turn it on. Okay, cooler is on, guys. Has that nice RGB effect. So let's set it down. Let's remove power saving mode now. Put it back at full performance and we'll run the Antutu to benchmark test. So this was the test we ran earlier. So if you see here, maximum temperature was 40.8. So we'll see how high the temperature goes with this Black Shark cooler. So let's start the test with the Black Shark cooler. Alright, so that's the score guys. Let me just turn off the cooler real quick. So connecting the Black Shark Fun Cooler, I actually managed to control the temperature. It only maxed out at 36.6 degrees versus the almost 40 degrees earlier. And it resulted in a bit of a higher score, though still nowhere close to the 650,000 score on the ROG Phone 3. There you go guys. So those are the final scores for the Antutu benchmark. Though I had cheated a bit here, I actually connected the fun cooler to keep the temperatures down. It did place second behind the ROG Phone 3. I'll try to test out a couple of things and see if I can squeeze out a bit more out of this Exynos 2100. I have seen scores as high as 640,000 for this chip. So I'm still wondering why I'm not getting close to that score on my phone. So with that said, let's end this video here. This has been a long one with all of the tests that we did. So if there are any other tests that you want me to do with the S21 Ultra, let me know in the comment section down below. But until then, we'll end things here. And as usual, like and subscribe, hit that bell icon notification, and see you all in my next one.